Hey, welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to run through some of the common materials you might want to weld and talk about some ins and outs of using different welding processes on each of them. I've run several examples for us to look at and we'll talk about some other situations also. Let's start off by talking about steel. When it comes to welding steel, you can use pretty much any process. If you look at this bracket I welded up, I used both MIG on the large tab and TIG on the bosses to give me a little bit finer control. I'll gravitate towards MIG welding whenever I have a steel fabrication project and the reason is it's fast, efficient, and gives a clean weld. If you look at this T-joint that I tacked up here as I lay this weld in here, it just goes in smoothly, it's easy, and comes out really nice. You can run anything from thin auto body type sheet metal clear up to fairly thick material, but you have to be careful. There are several different types of MIG welding. We won't dive into that here, but I have a video all about it. I'll link in the description if you want to learn about those. Um, but the most common type is short circuit MIG, and it has a major drawback when you weld really thick material where you can end up with a lack of fusion defect so it hasn't penetrated clear into the bottom root of the joint. Some other options for welding steel are flux core. That's similar to MIG except in, instead of uh, using a shielding gas, you actually have a flux that's in the center of a tubular wire. And as I'm welding this, you can see on it that I get a lot of spatter, little BBs that come out of the weld. It actually works really well. I've tested some welds out of it. I've done some cross sections and you do get a good solid weld with a machine like this and flux core wire, you can make some great stuff. It's just a lot harder to get quite as clean of a look out of a weld like that uh, with that type of machine. Now there are flux core wires that are different from this that you run with a shielding gas. It's often called dual shield. That's a trade name from ESOB. Lincoln calls it outer shield, whatever you want to call it. It's a gas shield and flux core wire that works great for so many situations and you can weld it out of position. The slag coating that comes off of that flux will help hold things in place. You get good penetration, a smooth bead, and it's just really easy to run. I have a video all about that in the description. If you watch my channel, you know I love a good stick weld. I have more confidence in a 7018 stick weld that's pro properly done than just about any other process on something from heavy steel. The main drawback when it comes to welding with stick is your thickness. You get thinner than this one eighth of an inch or about three millimeters that we're looking at here. It gets pretty difficult to run a good solid stick weld though, you know, it definitely can be done. Just not ideal for that. When it comes to TIG, I don't TIG weld steel quite as often. It can be good for more precise work like putting in those bosses and you can definitely get a really nice look out of the bead uh, here. This is on steel as well but uh, at the same time, it takes quite a bit more time, not only from a slower travel speed, but your preparation has to be right on the money. If you have any kind of oxide layer on the surface, that's not gonna work out. I made a video all about that the other day. But if something is critical, it's real precise, you're not gonna go wrong with a TIG weld. All right, let's just talk a little bit about aluminum, which is the other material that I work with quite a bit besides steel in my little shop here. Um, you can TIG weld it, you can MIG weld it, you can even stick weld it. Uh, I've never gotten a great result out of aluminum stick rod, but they are available. I get asked all the time whether there's aluminum flux core wire, and I've never seen it. I assume it's because aluminum fluxes are more complicated and a tubular wire out of that soft aluminum just wouldn't feed very well. So I'm gonna focus on TIG versus MIG here in our discussion. Let's talk a little bit about each one and why I'd pick one over another. So with TIG welding aluminum, you need to run AC or alternating current on your machine with a smaller cup size on your uh, torch. That's pretty much all you need to change. You run the same shielding gas, the same torch, same machine can switch between those different materials. On aluminum MIG, on the other hand, there's a whole lot more to change. So you need to switch from your argon CO2 blend to straight argon, and so having that extra gas cylinder can be pretty cumbersome. On top of that, aluminum wire is really soft and hard to feed. Some guns uh, have special liners you can put in them, like my HTP Pro Pulse. I've actually fed quite a bit of aluminum wire just out through the standard gun and never had a problem. In most situations, you'll end up using a spool gun. That's where you put the spool of wire up at the point of use so you don't have to feed it very far. And with that, there's just a bunch of setup and messing around and then you're gonna have to refeed your wire later in a lot of cases. Um, but once it's set up, you can run a pretty nice speed and you can really move along a joint like this. I have an aluminum MIG video or a couple of them 
Uh, I'll link in the description. But the big thing with aluminum MIG is the settings are so particular. You have to have it dialed in just right for your particular situation. And so if you're running a whole bunch of weld that's the exact same joint, exact same thicknesses, configurations, fit up, it's all the same, it's great for that. On the other hand, if you're running some short joints, TIG is gonna be really nice. So if you look at this big platform I welded up not too long ago, um, this had a ton of welding on it, and even though it would have been nice to run MIG, each of the joints was a little bit different, so I opted to run TIG instead um, because that allowed me to adapt to each situation. All right, let's just touch on stainless steel. As a welding engineer, stainless steels are the materials I've worked with the most, and there are a wide variety of different stainless steels for a ton of different things, but for most of us in small shops like me, um, the one that we'll come across is gonna be a 300 series or an austenitic stainless steel, and these can be welded with any of the welding processes also. Now, I'll usually TIG weld it, and the reason I TIG weld it is it can use that same shielding gas that I use for just about everything else. Notice I have this larger cup size on my TIG torch here to protect it from the atmosphere with a little more argon. Stainless steel tends to oxidize more, and that's why it'll change colors or turn gray if you don't protect it well. But with good argon shielding, you can see here I have some shiny silver where the cup was over it during post flow, as well as just some very light oxidation, that straw color. Now with MIG welding stainless, you need a different shielding gas. Like I mentioned, it's usually a trimix, but there are a bunch of different blends. You'd have to find the right one for you. Um, but with that setup, you can MIG weld a ton of it. It's done all the time in heavy fabrication. You can also stick weld stainless steel, assuming it's thick enough, usually about that one eighth or three millimeters thickness is a good rule of thumb. You don't wanna go below that with a stick rod. All right, well, I'd never run any self-shielded flux core wire on stainless steel before, but uh, while I was in the middle of filming this, literally right in the middle of it, I had a demo box show up with a bunch of products, including some self-shielded uh, stainless wire. So I figured I'd give it a try. Now that little Harbor Freight Flux 125 just didn't feel like it had enough power when I threw it in there. So I put it in a more powerful machine to test it out. And I messed with the settings a bit. And this is the best that I got. It's kind of a weird transfer mode, almost like a globular transfer. Um, I'll have to mess with it a little bit more. Uh, the weld came out a little bit lumpy and clumpy, but I think with a bit of practice, I could get it dialed in here. Towards the end of the weld, I actually had it running pretty good. So that is another option out there for you to weld stainless with some of that self-shielded flux core wire, and that could be pretty handy. Now, as far as other materials like copper, uh, inconel or different nickel alloys, titanium, uh, cobalt alloys, things like that, TIG welding is going to be your best bet most of the time. You can use some other processes for some of those, but uh, in general, you'll wanna go with TIG. And the bottom line is, if you wanna switch between materials, TIG is just the most flexible. Same shielding gas, same machine, same torch. You just change your consumables out, some settings, and you're ready to rip on a different material. But if you're just set up with a MIG and you need to weld some stainless, you need to weld some aluminum, definitely possible. Well, this is such a broad topic. I mean, I feel like we've barely been able to scratch the surface with it. There's so much more we can talk about. If you have other questions or you want to take the discussion further, let me know in the description below. And if you learned something here or like this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up. Until next time, weld safely and we'll see you then.